have you ever had a deer tick on the tip of your penis? I have. All right, off to a quality start with this video. I'd like to draw your attention to my uselessly floating hands, which may lead you to believe that I don't even know where to begin with this electrical enclosure, but... Jesus, I don't even know where to begin. The previous owner told me he couldn't get the jet ski running because he forgot to plug the hull drain, flooded the hull, and fried something in the electrical box. I told him he was a child and didn't deserve to own a jet ski, then speed bagged him and put him in the trash. I, I didn't actually do that because I think that's probably illegal. My plan here is to strip the electrical box, clean everything, test everything, and replace what I need to. Well, that's gross. Clean as a whistle. Who decided that whistles would be the standard for cleanliness? I mean, what person heard the piercing shriek of a whistle and was like, nope, no way that thing is dirty. Let's make that the epitome of clean. Oh man, good quality jokes the whole family can enjoy. This is the original MPEM, which stands for Man Parts Exploration Module or something ambiguous like that. As far as I understand, it's the brains of the whole electrical system. The first issue I noticed was that even simple things like focusing my camera are a challenge for me. Someone had chopped a hole in the case and mangled the circuit board. Probably the same child I threw in the trash, so this thing's garbage. But the jet ski also came with an aftermarket mip yum. Unfortunately, I have no way to follow the bench test in the manual because not all the wire colors match the original, and I don't have a wiring diagram for this aftermarket one. But look on the bright side, I may not be able to test it. Ooh, where'd that one go? But at least the fuses and fuse holders are corroded beyond the point of even using them anymore. Well, you know what they say about water and electronics. Anything's a liquid if you get it wet enough. This guy has seen some water damage, so I'm saying both of these units are scrap. Guess that means I have to order a new MPEM. Oh man, clench up folks, because this video's about to stay pretty much the same. This little bud here is the regulator slash rectifier, which converts AC pulses from the magneto to DC in order to charge the battery and run the electronics. This red wire here has a lovely little bend in it, so you can just slide your hand up and gently pluck the tip. These are a couple of yellow wires, which are very important. Just a loving caress here, and then you can touch this black wire and sort of flop it around a bit, and that's pretty cool. And look, this one does the same thing. Once more for good luck, and pinch the tip, and I should probably just buy a new one of these, because this one's all gross, and it has to be hooked up to a running engine to test it properly anyway. And might as well just buy a new starter solenoid also, since this one's all rusty and I don't like that. Really, I'm just trying to minimize the amount of troubleshooting I'll have to do when I actually try to start this thing. Should I have just bought a new jet ski? Probably. But am I simply going to give up when things get expensive? Of course Oh hey, check this out. Remember that oil pond in the hull in part one? No? Oh, you didn't watch that video? Oh, it was immature with too many penis jokes? Yeah, well, your penis is a joke. Sam? Someone got a bit frisky with a hose clamp. Not... In not in the usual way, and cracked the oil tank filler neck, so that's where all the oil came from. Wow, Cobra Hamson, I was really on the edge of my seat with that mystery. I can finally unclench my cheeks. Thank you, I bought another tank. Where were we? Oh, silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is that's an ignition coil, and hey, guess what? It actually tested functional. So let's see, we have a brand new rectifier, a brand new MPEM, a brand new starter solenoid, and an ignition coil that probably works. Man, this thing is gonna have like 3,000 horsepower and it may even run. Jeez, that's stupid. Jokes the whole family can enjoy. <laughs> There's something immensely satisfying about making an old thing new again. So many things are designed to break that it just makes sense to care for the shit you have. Or, I guess in this case, care for some trash that you bought. But, as they say, one man's trash is another man's trash and then we die. But seriously, this is good shit. I mean, I knew nothing about electronics before this project, and now I still know nothing about electronics. I mean, I just took a lot of videos of wires so I know where they go. But if you want to improve, I think you gotta be content being seen as a little bit foolish. 
Wiring the aftermarket MPAM was not as confusing as I thought it would be, probably because my brain is immensely powerful. It came with a wiring diagram, so I was able to compare its wire routing with the original wiring diagram. It looks confusing, but it's literally just comparing colors and following lines, so now I'm a kindergartner. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. There are two great things in life, making passionate love to a woman and flush cut zip ties. Here's a quick limerick for you. This may look like electrical trash, all soaked with old oil and gas, but with hard work and patience and some motivation, you too can learn how to eat. There are a few loose ends here that connect to the wiring harness in the jet ski, so until the snow melts, I'm just gonna sit here and do this. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Stay tuned for a pointless tangent. This was my old workspace for this jet ski project. This was my old workspace for this jet ski rebuild project. It was crude in a foosball table, but at least the lighting was absolutely horrible. If I was going to spend the rest of the winter as a basement troll, I wanted a real workbench. I don't... I don't really have anything else to say here. I mean, I'm just building a workbench. I got bored of staring at footage of wires, so this is really just for me, not for you, Greg? I am excited by how it turned out, though. Just a little excitement boy. A happy little, happy little excitement boy. I mean, it's got a shelf for my computer, and if that doesn't thicken your milk, then... This is the variable trim system module, which adjusts the angle of the nozzle to raise or lower the bow of the ski. Oh, don't you worry, cute stuff. I hear you out there breathing, shifting bashfully in your seat, practically perspiring with the desire to ask how the VTS system works. Release the bass. VTS position sensor and the relays that control the motor are epoxied into this box, so when they inevitably fail, they have to be bypassed, which the previous owner did by cutting these wires and splicing in a couple of relays. They'll control the motor fine, but the two brown sensor wires have been snipped, so the VTS display gauge won't work. I tested the position sensor using the resistance test in the manual, and it failed with flying colors. It would be pretty neato if the gauge worked, so I bought this thing called the Trim Fix Module, which, for 90 bucks, comes with your very own miniature woman. Is that a good deal? Who knows, I tend to avoid buying other people. Just one of my silly personal rules. I'll salvage the connectors from this wiring harness to use with the Trim Fix Module, but for now it will go, Jesus dude, just pick it up. For now it will go in my almost trash but not quite, which is also how my mother describes me, box. These wires that attach to the old wiring harness are now as useless as, like, uh, like a poorly executed simile or something. Okay, here are all the trim fix module bits. This is one of them, and this one here is slightly smaller, and this one's passionate about 18th century Russian women, and this is a fuse. I have no idea what this is. The sensor magnet gets epoxied to the trim shaft so that when the position sensor is mounted, it can sense... position. To keep everything consolidated, I mounted the relay module directly onto the VTS enclosure. Super cool. My plan is to route the motor wires through the back of the enclosure and silicone them in place. I can't actually wire the motor yet, since I need to hook it up to the VTS switch so that I don't wire the motor backward. However, the jet ski is covered in about a foot of snow at the moment, so we'll deal with the rest of the wiring when I reassemble the whole jet ski in the spring. Don't you worry those sexy little buns though, there will be some more videos before then. So, latress on the men jet. <laughs> Oops, that's not, that's not what I wanted to do, whoops. <laughs>